وطبيبنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we find in these difficult times our hujaj are faced with severe economic situations some of have actually cancelled for going to Hajj some don't even bother because they truly look at the ayat of the Quran man istata'a ilayhi sabila that the condition the economic condition is not there for them to go and we are finding this economic situation worldwide people having their jobs people losing their homes people losing their cars people losing their luxury lives which they have lived which they have not accounted for they were living they were living in a dreams world and they're finding themselves more and more so in debt it is difficult for us not to be in debt in this time and age the high cost of living just to meet our very basic needs requires us to be in debt to put a roof over our head is already a huge debt we get into debts because of our houses because we want to furnish our houses with the basic necessities we get into debts when we buy a car when we do business we want to educate our children we go into debt being a debt being in debt has become part and parcel of our lives and it's become part and parcel of this modern way of living it's something we cannot escape from we cannot put our heads into the ground and pretend it's not there islam does not forbid us from borrowing money Allah has created mankind and he understands the psychology of man and he understands the need of man that is why Allah has never forbidden his servants from going into debt he has not forbidden us from borrowing money but Allah Jalla Jalalahu has got boundaries he's charted us boundaries from borrowing and how to borrow he has given us acceptable lines and guidelines of what is death and what is not. And these guidelines are there to protect us. So that we will not be destroyed by debt. And that is what is unfortunately happening to us. Debt has gone, we have gone way above our way of living because we want to compete with the Joneses as the saying goes. And we are destroying ourselves. We're going into depression, we're taking tablets, we're doing all sorts of things. Which is not the answer. Islam has determined how we should borrow money. Islam has written down in the Quran how we should go about it. And has also told us it must be free from riba. And I will speak a little bit about it. I spoke a couple of months ago on the aspects of riba. But I'll touch on it today because I'll speak more on the economic and the debt situation, how to get out of it if we can. What does Islam offer us, inshaAllah? Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha tadayantum bidayn ila ajalim musamma faktubu O you who believe, O you believers, when you contract a debt for a fixed period, write it down. Let a scribe write it down in justice between you. Let him, the debtor in other words, who incurs this liability, says Allah in the Quran, dictate, and he must fear Allah, says Allah in the Quran. He must be quite conscious of Allah and diminish not anything of what he owes. Whatever is due, that is the amount that must be given. This ayat in the Quran, if you go to Surah Baqarah, Surah uh, verse 282, it's probably the longest 
surah that I have seen, and not surah ayah. It's probably more than a page long, without any circle, so those who understand the diacritical marks of it, normally it ends up with a circle, and that's the end of that ayah. But this, surah, this ayah to do with debt and riba, it starts off, Ya Allah, from the top of that page, and goes right through the page, and explains to us. Allah also speaks in Surah Baqarah, in Surah 275. The importance of business transactions and loans. Those who eat riba, you see, unfortunately in our community, we find loan shocks. They thrive upon another person's debt and they will put on 500%, 600%, key money, and all these kind of things that are going on. And unfortunately, the poor person who's trying to get out of debt finds himself in it. This was brought about the American system of economics, the British system of economics, and yet the Muslims excel the British and the Americans as far as imposing riba on it. And that is the sadness of it. And Allah says, those who eat the riba, will not stand on the day of Hashar except like standing of a person driven by shaitan leading him to madness. May Allah protect us, Ya Allah. They say, and this is the semantics we use, like the, the people that gamble, they will make gamble halal. No, you see, my family is seen to, my house is seen to, my wife has been nafaka. This is what's being money, man, so it cannot go on. This is a mindset. I have to sit with one gambler, elderly Muslim gambler, and he convinced me. Well, not convince me. We tried to convince him that this man still come. And I said, if a dah hit me, my brother from Islam has me on the gambling field. This is how, unfortunately, in Riva, Allah says exactly, there are people that say, that are people that say, Trading is only like riba. It's like another form of economics we go in. Allah has said that trading is permitted, but riba is forbidden. And Allah will destroy riba and will give increase in sadaqah. May Allah make us matter. And then Allah warns us. And if you do not do it, they take notice of war from Allah and His Messenger. Allahumma hafazna ya Allah. Ameen. Amen. Allahumma hafazna ya Allah. Amen. We have to receive protection from that. We can see that Muslims are not allowed to engage in any business or deaths that involve riba. What does this mean? It means that we are not allowed to pay a debt at a higher price than what we originally borrowed. But my brothers and sisters, the economic situation today demands us to be part of the riba system. You cannot tell us. Maybe one in a million, one in a billion Muslim. Actually, the irony of it is I was told by a businessman when he did some negotiations in Mecca that the Saudi government is involved, or the Kuwaiti government, or the Muslim supposed to be government. They are charging riba through the next if you just be fought on one or two items. Can you imagine? SubhanAllah. They are caught up. A Muslim government that's supposed to run the economic system according to Islam, they are caught up in the Western system. Let me speak a bit about it. About the American economic system that is going down. Why? I get a feeling that part of the Arab money is being withdrawn. I might be wrong, I'm just looking from the outside. Is that why this economy of, of America is going down and sucking the entire world with us? And what are the steps to take to remedy that? And we'll speak a bit further on that, if Allah gives us the time. <laughs> Even our savings is generating interest. The loans we take from the banks, for our homes, for our transportation, for our furniture, there's no running away, it contains riba. The reality of situation is, when you want to get married, these are the conditions of nafaqah we have to maintain our wives. So unfortunately, we get into debt. But you see, our problem is, instead of buying 
a small little Toyota like mine. They want to buy a SL case, what's it called? Some number. They can't even know what we That's what they aim for. But their salary is 2,000 a month, 1,000 a month. So in reality, does it belong to you? Does the furniture belong to you? Does the car belong to you? Does the house belong to you? You can go on and go on. Young yeah, people are going on hikes and they are paying my credit card. No, you see, I must get insurance on it. Fine. But I'm 10 years later, they are still paying their hajj. What is madness is this? Have we gone mad, Pagal? That is what Allah speaks about in the ayat of the Quran. That يَتَخَبَّتَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ يَتَخَبَّتَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ مِنَ الْمَسِ You are in a mess. That's what it is. But we can't escape from it. And Sharia speaks about that aspect as darurat. Necessity. We are forced to go into a certain situation. <laughs> so what do we do? We have to take steps to get out of it. We must ensure that we reduce as much as possible our involvement in the riba system. We must try our hardest to seek ways of business that does not involve riba. And we must try to minimize. I'm not saying to be completely free because our entire world economic system, we are caught up in that. So what we must do? We must not be dependent upon it because we will die of that debt. And I'll speak a little bit about the debt. So when we decrease our loans that we take up, we decrease the debts that we incur. And remember, being in debt is an amana, it's a responsibility. And more so, when we die, this responsibility is not erased. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to ask if this person has any debt. And if they said yes, there is anybody that is prepared to recruit his debt and pay off his debt, and if there was no one, then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell Abu Qatada, you perform the salah over that person. I'm not going to perform the salah. That's the seriousness of death. Abu Huraira says, Radiallahu anhu, the Qadiyya alayhi salam has said, Nafsul mu'min mu'allaqatun bidaynin hatta yakhda'an. That the ruh of a believer clings to his death, says Kalt, until it has been paid off. O oh, inheritors of your parents who have inherited your parents' debts, pay off their debts. Don't use their money for yourselves because their debts have to be paid off first so they can rest in peace in their kubo. If Otherwise what happens? We're putting this burden on our families unfairly, unnaturally, first and foremost, we are doing it to our families unfairly because we want to live a lifestyle way beyond our means. We don't have to. That person that has a roof over the head, that has got something to eat, and got a bed to sleep, say, Alhamdulillah, that person, if we consider as a vagrant or a hobo, MashaAllah, he put on this rate on the next one of the next one of the next we have to be, look at kana'ah, contentment in our lives. Otherwise, we will never ever be contented with what we have, we'll keep on consuming. And that's why, now the baram is coming, mashallah, we must now look for new furniture in the house, go into debt. No, we must change our cars now, go into debt. No, we need to do a bit of alterations here. This window doesn't suit, we go to that window. What for? Is that a necessity? That is not the rurat in Islam. The rurat to go into this kind of transaction is the very basic necessities that we're supposed to have in our lives. Not luxuries. If you have one child, Muslim, one wife, or maybe two wives, you must have a cousin. You must, if you have two or three wives, Ya yeah, Allah, what does the Sharia say? You've got to proportion your wives place of standing and supporting and maintaining all that. You've got to do it. And if you don't, you as that husband has gone into haram by taking wife number two, number three, and number four. And those imams and sheikhs and molanas and unfairly are more interested in the salamats, they have done a great injustice to that man by accepting and making nikah of that person. 
Ya ima bakihatu haramdun. Ya ma Allah hidam. You know, all these excuses people are using. I had one yesterday. Okay? And insists, I refuse. Refuse. You can go elsewhere. Then he came back after three months, after six months. Some people try to weigh you down, you see. Because they know you a little bit, they think, because of friendship, and that's the sadness, because of friendship, they think that the Sharia, Quran must take away, I'd rather lose you as a friend than Sharia. We don't have friends like that. If you have friends like that, you run them the quicker the better. Islam wants the Ummah to be satisfied with what they have. Islam doesn't want the Ummah to be properly occupied with worldly things. al malu wal banun Al-Mal wal banun zinatul hayat dunya Wealth and children are the distractions and the ornaments of this world. But what are we supposed to go for? As mentioned in Surah Kahf. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا But good, righteous deeds that last, even in the case when we are dead. For example, Salatah al-Jariyah will forever be going on whilst we are in the Fubur, we will reap that benefit. These are the type of investments we have to look at. But good and righteous deeds that last are better with your up for rewards and better in respect of hope. So chasing ornaments, dunya things, you know, a person who got chases the dunya, I've said this before, the dunya runs away from you. The person who chases akhirah, the dunya runs after you. It basically the dunya becomes meaningless to you. It's just a thing by the way. Did it affect Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq? When he was a multi millionaire? Did it affect Sayyidina Khadija al Kubra when she was a millionaire? No. They made the money. Money did not make them. You know the story. They gave everything away for the sake of Allah and His Rasul. Because this chasing is a sign of greed. And greed in Islam is despised. Nabi alayhi salam used to make this dua. Anas bin Malik radiallahu an said that he had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma inni a'udhu baka min al-hammi wal-hazan wal-ajazi wal-khasal wal-jubni wal-bukhal wal-dar'i al-dayn wa gharabati al-rijal He used to make this dua. Oh Allah, said Nabi alayhi salam, I seek refuge with you from worry and grief. We turn it into depression. And from weakness and laziness. Ya Allah, I said, late in the dunya, don't talk. Look at our road, people are sitting and just, they, one of the excuses they have got to work. But look how Nabi is saying this. Protect us, Ya Allah, from laziness and weakness. And from cowardice and miserliness and stinginess. And from being heavily in debt. And from being overpowered by men. Amin, Ya Allah. It goes for each and every one of us. Amin, Ya Allah. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha also reports in the hadith. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam used to make a dua. Allahumma, inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'asimim wal-maghram. And then somebody asked, Ma'aksar ma'aksar sa'idhu ya Rasulullah min al-maghram. Was said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi salatu wa sallam used to make a dua. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from all sins and from being in debt. Then someone said, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I see, very often you see refuge with Allah from being in debt. And he said, yes. Inna rajul idha gharima haddatha fakadhaba wa wa'ala fa'akhlaf. He said, if a person is in debt, he tells lies when he speaks and breaks his promises when he promises. Doesn't that sound familiar, brothers and sisters? Then inshallah, mawla, Allah khi. It's not come. They can have fees that will not come. They can't pay you with the rest of fees. We have that situation. Here at this masjid, at the madrasa, some genuinely can't afford Alhamdulillah. Let me see to them. But people that can afford, Inshallah, I want to go back home to come and go back. I want to go back home to kiss that. Three salat, three salat. Three salat. Three salat. Three salat. After that, they pursue something that they feel sick. He will tell you, 
I know I owe you money, but you feel a discount for me? Have you these are all familiar? Oh Allah protect us from that. Nabi Alayhi Salaam gave advice to Ibn Ibn Hakim Ibn Hijam. He said, Ya Hakim, certainly the world of this the wealth of this world gives comfort and it's sweet. Whoever seeks wealth without greed and without glorifying them, he will be blessed by Allah. Make us of those young. <laughs> However, says Nabi alayhi salam, whoever seeks this wealth in greed, that is the reality of it. What does Nabi alayhi salam say? He will not be blessed by Allah and he will be like the person who eats and continues eating and you will never ever feel full and satisfied. And Nabi Ali Islam ends up by saying, and know that the hand that gives is better than the hand that receives. <laughs> we must inculcate in, in earlier in the week of the first or second hadith, we make these niyas, these duas, that we have to check our niyah, our intention and change our hearts and our characters because we need to imbibe this characteristic of, from, of Allah fi Nabi characterize the characteristics of Allah within us Ghafoor, Rahim not to be stingy and so forth the Messenger of Allah has shown us how we can receive Allah's blessings with our wealth we cannot base our desires on greed that is ego. And we spoke about the seven different, for those who are present here, the, Lord, the seven different types of nafs, as mentioned in the Quran, from nafsul mutu, ammara bisu, right through to nafsul mutuma'inna, and radiyatam mardiyya. These are the stages of nafs we have to control. That's why we're keeping to get ourselves into debt. Let us practice the behavior of a true Muslim. Let us instill the aspect of kana'ah that is being grateful and satisfied whatever you are able to afford we have that's such a great ni'mah to have that within us may Allah accept us for that because if you follow our desires the debts will incur riba and that debt makes us dependent upon others and we'll go into this grave with it and we are burning our pet, our 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 children and our wives and our offspring of that. Remember that true wealth is not the amount of material wealth you possess or the brand of clothes that you wear. True wealth is not in the value of the furniture or things you possess, nor in the size or beauty of the house. But truly wealth in Islam are those who are least dependent upon others. <coughs> Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, wealth is not from materials. But wealth lies in the least dependency we have on others. May Allah make us of those, Ya Rahim. We have to make this dua which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made. Allahumma ya farij al-ham wa kashif wa kashif al-dar wa mujib da'wat al muttar Oh Allah, O oh remover of anxiety, O oh eraser of difficulties, O oh, answer of the call of the one in difficulty, <coughs> Rahmanu dunya wal akhirah wa rahimuhuma, most merciful and most gracious of this world and the hereafter. Irhamni fi qada'i, fi qada'i dayni. Show mercy to me by removing my debt, Ya Allah, as a mercy which will enrich me beyond the need of the mercy of others. Amen. You know, the eyes of Quran is beautiful. We have to look to it. You find ourselves in financial difficulties? Don't think by sitting and making dua only is going to save the situation. It does help and contribute of us getting up from our backside to doing something about it. That's why dua is so important. What did uh, the Ayatul Karima? Beautiful. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal dhalimi. Ayat of the Quran, Surah 21, verse, 20, uh, uh, verse 28. When the Yunus alayhi salam, when he found himself in difficulty, what did he say? There is no God but you are Allah, glorified are you. Truly, I have been of the wrongdoers. You must acknowledge that. When we find ourselves in difficulty, say that. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimin. And when you find yourself, look at the beautiful dua. Rabbi, 
إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير أو الله أو ما ذا truly I am in desperate need of any good that you show and bestow upon me فقير because we are فقير we are from the فقراء we need it and we also say as Nabi Ayyub alayhi salam said in the Quran أني مسني الدر وأنت أرحم الراحمين truly the stress has seized me but you are the most merciful of those that are merciful and we know we have to make this dua الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُسِيبَةٌ and when they find themselves in musibah, in difficulty what do we say? قَالُوا إِلَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِلَّا إِلَّهِ رَجِعُونَ these are ayat of the Qur'an that brings us to self-realization that our Lord is there, our Lord is not continuing to enjoy the dunya, no we must use the dunya رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا oh Allah, give us good in this world cars, houses, anything Allah doesn't say we must live a lead and ascetic life, no we must enjoy Allah's ni'mas upon us don't live like a pauper if you are a millionaire that is being ungrateful to Allah. That's even shirk. You must use the ni'mah, but also give the ni'mah. You know, Cape Town, when they make khadaks and arwah, very famous, sometimes we don't know the ayahs of the Quran. And this has been a tradition for centuries in Cape Town when we make this particular khadak. And this ayah is so suitable. What do we say? الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدَ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ I'm even giving you the tune how we do it. So, بَجَمَا سَامْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Don't we say that? What are we saying? It says Allah in the Quran, Those unto whom the people said, bury the people that have gathered against you. When it gets heavy upon us, and then you can say, you must fear them. Fear the bank manager. Fear this one. Fear that one. No. Fazadahum imana. It only increased their iman. And what did they say? Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah. That's the of Quran. Allah is sufficient for us. And he is the best of disposer of affairs. May Allah make us aware of the situation that we are in. May Allah open up our eyes to the situations that we are in. I need to comment on one or two issues here. We have heard the interim leader of America, the new vice president elect, is now Obama bin Laden. So Muslims have suddenly taken on to him as if he's our savior and we can get something better in our life from all over the world. Can't you understand Astaghfirullah? Ya Do we put our tawakkal onto him? I just read the ayat of the Quran, we must make Hasbullah wa Ni'mal Wakil. Do you think he's going to change the situation of Palestine, of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and Asia? Wake up! Can never happen! They will only be for themselves. He will probably be an Uncle Tom. Wallahu a'ala. But our prediction for politics is don't depend on a personality like that leading that government because the Zionists are very sly. They don't have to be in parliament to control the economy of the world. I also need to, I was just informed this morning the disgusting situation of SARS revenue starting to check our judge in Johannesburg airport to see what type of money is. This is a very despicable thing to do in the next oppressive. We have complete and open way to perform our ibadat. And now all of a sudden in this open South Africa, New South Africa, when people go on hike, they must be sent. Where's your money come from? Is the halal? Is it a deliberate attack now that you want to subjugate us at airports? Wake up, Muslims, as if this is a good uh, election move to do for the ANC. Wake up. I also need to wish the matrix everything of the best and all our students that are writing, are busy writing, or finished writing, about to your success, inshallah, and our matrix. Matricular is good. Choose good uh, uh, careers to give your benefit to mankind, inshallah. 
we also played three roles our for jazz and I'm going to make it easy for them now I'm going to come back. And speaking of our guests, we have a young man who's going to do the khutbah as well as the salah, Hafiz Fahim Baila. He's from Durban, he's studying at UCT. He's the first year UCT business science student. We wish Allah protect him with the health that he's got and maintain it. And also, he, he finished his degrees, that he's busy with, degree that he's busy with, that he can become a benefit to society. Yeah,